three of Georgia's main pitchers. So do they carry that knowledge over to today's game? For Georgia, it was Madison Kerpix getting the start last night, and I thought the first inning was really good for her. She was locked in. Her changeup was great. She was getting really big swings and misses. Um, and then just after that, I found that FSU kind of found a way to eliminate her best pitch, and they weren't swinging at that rise ball, and they were a little bit more on time with the change. And we'll just say this. Th this is the lowest ERA, team ERA, for Georgia in the pitcher circle, and Tony Baldwin is so proud of that. But they didn't have a good performance yesterday. And the beauty of this sport is you get another day today, and giving Shelby, Shelby Walters that opportunity is what he has chose to do. Now we saw Shelby Walters come in in relief last night. Two innings pitch. She gave up two hits, gave up four earned runs, and walked two batters. Two balls and a strike to Mudge. Gets jammed inside. Cindy Chambly is playing at first tonight, and she makes the play just in time. And Shelby Walters does a great job of just spreading the zone. She tends to keep the ball down in the zone, has that drop, can mix up with that curve, a little bit of an off speed. But the one thing that is different is that she's pumped up that velocity. She can hit up her 60s. We saw her hit last night, 71. She lives that 68 to 70 zone. Janai Kerr, the first pitch in foul territory. Yeah, we were talking to Lonnie Alameda, Florida State's head coach, about Shelby Walters because it wasn't last year she was hurt, but two years ago in 2021, she was pitching for Duke. They faced her two times. And I said, what's the difference now in Walters? The velocity, yeah. she's throwing harder as the game goes along, and she's commanding the zone better. And she has a different perspective. I mean, this is a young lady that had to sit out all of last year, and I think you learn a lot when you're going through injuries and you're in and out of the training room, and she even vocalized it. Like, when the game's taken away from you, I think it gives you this different perspective. You see it from a bird's-eye view and learn more than you ever thought possible. And I think she even makes the statement, like, I'm so much better because of that injury and what I mentally had to go through. Janai Kerr coming out, swinging it in the two spot for Florida State. But I don't know about you, this crowd last night and kind of how they've been was a completely different crowd than last week. Yes. Like this and is. And there were a lot of people here last week. They're savage like last night and into today. <laughs> Kerr reaching for it to stay alive. And look, there's a good Georgia cheering section too. Mm -hmm. Right on the third base side. Both of these teams' last appearance in the Women's College World Series was in 2021 for both Georgia and Florida State. Ball and two strikes to Kerr. Rolling it to Kuma to retire. And I think the importance of that first inning, especially for Shelby Walters, obviously not getting the start yesterday, but kind of digging deep into what the emotions of a game like this feels like. like. That first inning, the heart race is pumping more than I think you perceive it to be when you're in the bullpen. It's just different. You're playing at Florida State's house. You have ice in your veins. Your back's up against the wall. And it's being able to contain those emotions, try to execute the pitch with a little bit of an extra adrenaline rush. Kaylee Hart. Harding, the first baseman, to the gap. Thought about taking two. This is a Florida State team that leads the nation in doubles. That is their mentality every time they make contact. Can I take two? Well, and especially Harding, I mean, had two doubles last night. It was a huge piece to their offensive production. You just could not get her out. Finds a way to just hit this right back up the middle and i thought for sure she's gonna go to two and sandercock standing up loving it so kaylee harding reaches 
with two outs. They call time. They're trying to from first base. A little shoe tie moment. Yeah, you can't get to second with a loose shoelace. Maybe with four with one shoe. Yeah. It's not ideal. So here we go, Michaela Edenfield. We saw her move up in the lineup yesterday. Fouls off the first pitch. She went one for two in game one with an RBI, a run scored, and two walks. This is a player that leads Florida State in that category. And she's been good in the NCAA tournament. I mean, three for nine, has that big home run, three ribbies, has six walks. So it just goes to show she is someone, even when she was batting in the seven hole last weekend, patient, has good ABs. Walters ahead, 0 and 2. Mike Bartling behind the plate for us tonight. In the postseason, we do have a four person umpiring crew, so there is an umpire at every base. We also have replay review. Kuma crashing. And we'll go ahead and get Harding. No score. We'll see how Georgia has adjusted after a night of sleep. Their bats coming up. Have to be able to get those timely hits with runners in scoring position. That's really what it kind of comes down to when you get to this point of the season because you're not going to get a lot of chances. Good night showing fun and she'll pull, pull back for strike one. And that was really the difference that Coach Baldwin talked about. He said that Florida State found a way to manufacture runs all different ways and we just did not. And sometimes that's how the game works. That's why we get to live to play another day. Dallas Goodnight was one for two. Count goes one and one to Goodnight. But look, the confidence is there for this Georgia lineup. And one game is not going to rock them. You know, they're experienced. They, we've seen them flip it the next day and come back out swinging hard. This is the number two team in the nation in home runs. Jammed up, Josie Muffley retires good night. Tony Baldwin said, we got into some situations and our bats just didn't come through. Look at their numbers from last night. 0 for 12 with runners on, 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position. But when we sat down and talked with these guys Thursday morning, they were really big, especially the women that we talked to, on being able to face adversity and failing, but understanding that they're not getting judged by their teammates. They are okay, meaning they're not letting that eat them alive. Right. Short-term memory, being able to bounce back and not letting a bad at-bat maybe dictate how the rest of the game will play out for you. And, I mean, that's a big league mentality. You can't be stepping into the batter's box after you've had one bat at bat and try to count yourself out. And this is a team that faced adversity yesterday and lost a game by quite a bit and offensively didn't show up to where they normally feel like they can and they get another crack at it today. And yeah, the best thing is they get to come back out and try again. Pitch inside will be called for a strike for Mac Leonard facing Lindy Ray Davis, the catcher. Just 70 miles an hour drop on the hands. No big deal. All good. <laughs> <laughs> Tough to hit. I think what I dig about Mac Leonard and what we saw last week and carrying over into today, it's just like my plate. Dude, you're going to stand on the plate. Like, I'm going to come in. I'm going to come hot on your hands. Lindy Ray Davis is crowding. She's at the back of the box. Mac Leonard's still throwing her 70-mile-an-hour drop ball in the inner half. And at times, we haven't seen that much pitchers wanting to go in. It's such an important piece to just instill a little fear in the hitter. And she gets strike two. When she can go in, how does that help the rest of her pitches working in the zone? Well, I mean, 70 down and in to a lefty is a tough pitch. So if you're able to tail that movement down in that drop ball for Mac Leonard, then it just opens up the outer half. If she wants to go out, if she wants to go up, but I think it's being able to go in and attack a hitter and spread the zone, and I could see her potentially going away here. Oh, she goes back inside and gets the swing and a miss. And why wouldn't she, Courtney Lyle? Look at this true drop ball spin down and in. Such a pretty pitch. Didn't even have to bait her with the away. And don't let the ERA fool you. 
at the end of the day, it has come down to the body, right? Coach Alameda said she's battled some injuries, but she's feeling good today, has that screw, has that rise ball, and she's developed this drop ball this year, and you just look at how nasty that pitch is. It's a money pitch for her. Jada Kearney now with two down. I love the versatility of Mac Leonard, too. She bats in the DP spot. She came in and played first base and had all three outs in one inning last night. And then, you know, pitches. <laughs> that thing. Does it all. But great spots, though. Like, that's 68 hitting a hot corner. Like, we're not leaking over the plate. That's what it's going to come down to today for both both teams. Walters being able to hit really good spots and change speeds. And I'd say the same here for Florida State. Kearney's the leading home run hitter for Georgia. Change. And Mike Bartling behind the dish is not a drop ball pitcher's best friend. He does not tend to call pitches low in the zone. I, he was the umpire when I was in the college game. So it's just, you know that going in. So sometimes mentally, you got to prepare yourself. Hey, I'm a drop ball pitcher. I know I can't get that pitch. Can I bring it up a little bit? The K-Time chant has begun. Swing, miss, sit down. Devin Flaherty will leave, lead off five, six, and seven up facing Shelby Walters. Takes it to Kuma, who takes care of it. Let's check into the studio with Matt Schick. Thank you. That's a game changer to have Montana Fouts out there for Alabama. It is. She's had to obviously take a little bit of time off. So it'll be interesting to see if that time off of not competitively pitching because she's someone that has almost thrown every inning for Alabama this year, right? So taking a little bit of time off. Has that helped her? Is she, the knee going to hold up? You like that she is getting the ball? because she is that senior. She's not going to get another crack at this. So the fact that she gets to play one last home stand at home in a Super Regional, I mean, that's what it's all about. Mac Leonard up, pitcher versus pitcher, and Walters ahead 0-2. You see Shelby Walters. A little bit of a smirk. I'm with you. That's a pitch that was getting called on the flip side for Florida State with Mac Leonard, that drop in. I like that spot by Walter as I continue to keep pumping there, try to see if we can get that pitch. And Mac Leonard, a hitter for me that has struggled in the NCAA tournament. I mean, when you look at her numbers, I mean, one for 15. And she's someone that has been a consistent staple in this lineup for them all year. And sometimes it just takes one good A-B, one good piece off the bat. Hopper to Chambly. And Leonard is retired. Now batting number one, Allie Wakefacen. Allie Waycaser following Mac Leonard in the seventh spot. She was one for three last night, two RBI. Picking up her second hit in the tournament last night.
Kelly Waycaser, a player that's taken her game to the next level. She's been so present every day. That's something that Florida State talks a lot about in their program, being where your feet are, being invested in every little thing you're working on and doing. Foul ball. One thing I've been seeing in this series so far is just hitters doing a really good job of laying off the up pitch. Like, that's a pitch that Shelby Walters can throw. We saw yesterday Madison Kerpix. That pitch was pretty much eliminated after the first time through the lineup for Florida State. They did a good job of seeing it down. Nice pitch from Walters. 2-2. Full count now to Waycaser. Back to back changeups for Shelby Walters. One for a strike, one down and away. Hit towards Ellie Armistead. Three up, three down. Quick inning for Shelby Run. She's followed by Kumo with 12 and Chambly with 12. And as much as, Courtney, the stats don't lie, you look at like last year and how five unseeded teams in the postseason did damage. I mean, Texas wasn't even seeded. They dropped game one to Arkansas of the Super Regional and came back to win two. So I think as athletes, it's like, also being able to look at things like that and go like, all right, like it's, you can never count a team out, especially Georgia and the way that they swing it, their confidence. Well, the mental piece is something that head coach Tony Baldwin focuses on with this Georgia team. We were asking the, the women on this team who mental side who do you go to and they're like well Tony's the one that talks us through it and he said our pregame talk every game this year has been we're going to be ready for whatever the game throws at them because you never know what's going to happen on the field yeah whether it's a bad call whether it's someone booting a ball there's so much that can go wrong and I think the teams that mentally are able to respond and not let little things get in there are the ones that tend to come out when the pressure is there because the little things don't affect them and both these clubs do such a good job of that mental piece from Tony Baldwin and Lonnie Alameda. Slow roller to Harding at third. She's got a cannon of an arm to get there anyway. Back to the studio with Matt. Man, what a great day, Matt, for softball. Crazy things happening. Started at noon on our ESPN family of networks, and we're going deep into the night. And I know the World Series is obviously one of the biggest weekends in this game, but to me, Super Regionals is so much fun to watch. Like, these best two out of three, like, you have the day where you get to get ready for these games. And I think sometimes when you're in those regional weekends, you're just like, go, 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 go. But you have a lot more time to just settle in in a super regional field. The week lead up, one game a day. Sydney Kuma, the leader in average for Georgia. She's the one that had the solo shot last night.
Janai Kerr running over. Waycaser is there, though, from right field. We talk about a hot bat, Sydney Chambly, six home runs in her last eight games. She's on a five game hit streak, batting in the sixth spot. And in her last nine games, 19 RBIs from the sixth spot. I mean, you love to see it. She's been so scrappy in the postseason, and it doesn't go without saying the emotion, watching her hit two home runs in one game, and her face, and seeing her around the bases. Like, I don't know if she surprised herself, but her reaction almost seemed like it. She was like this giddy little kid rounding the bases. Pop up, Muffley wants it. Three up, three down. This is one that just gets a little bit dangerous. You think about yesterday with Josie Muffley and just how scrappy she was being able to turn that lineup over. If I'm Chambly and Mosley, I'm expecting Bunt all day. Trying to put pressure on that defense. Move Keen over. Muffley hitting 320 over her last 11 games. She was one for three last night. A big momentum play, as you mentioned. And she is hit, back-to-back -back hit batters. Two on for the top of the order. And this is when Florida State got even more dangerous the second time through the order last night. Second and third time through in the NCAA tournament. They have scored 22 runs and hit 306. Yeah, they find a way to adjust. And majority of teams really do, Courtney. Like, that first time through the lineup, you definitely have a plan as a hitter that you want to execute. But your second, third ABs and the knowledge that you pass on to the team, you go up there with a, maybe a different game plan than the first at bat, and Florida State definitely executed yesterday, that second time through, no doubt. So Autumn Belvai is gonna come in and run at second. She has a ton of speed. Top of the order, Kaylee Mudge. Really interesting series of events. Shelby Walters had hit eight batters all season. She just hit two in a row. Definitely a little bit uncharacteristic for sure, but now is when you kind of got to step it up. You got to trust your defense. You got to try to execute, hit good spots. Lonnie Alameda called Kaylee Mudge the little engine that could. She has been a worker since she arrived at Florida State, and she always has such high expectations for herself. Lonnie said sometimes we got to remind her, hey, have fun, <laughs> smile out there. You see her do that in her routine. Watch her routine here. She'll take the bat up, take a deep breath, give you a smile, get back in, ready to go. Ball and two strikes to Mudge. Lady Ray Davis does a nice job of stopping that. happened when you think about yesterday like Madison Kerpik super sharp that first inning and then second inning third inning stuff just kind of got away and it is tough when you have back-to-back -back hit by pitches you put yourself in a little bit of a, a tough spot as a pitcher but now's the time to battle back make great pitches 
It's going to hop to Walters. But Mudge moves the runners. This is the beauty of the postseason right here, Courtney. It comes down to being able to execute with one out, with runners on. And on the flip side for Georgia, now is the time to play great defense. You have the infielders pinched in a little bit. There has to be so much trust from Shelby Walters to know that our infield has her back, try to roll a ground ball. Janai Kerr to Armistead coming home and the tag applied by Lindy Ray Davis. Janai Kerr at second. And Florida State has called for a review of this play. But it doesn't go without saying it comes down to the execution. Armistead doesn't freak out. She fields the ground ball. She makes the money throw to Lindy Ray Davis, who had an obstruction call yesterday. There's so much going on in a play like that. And Georgia able to step up and make it happen. We'll see what the replay review says, but that was still a solid play. Oof. The original call was out. Does the hand hit the plate first? This could be the money shot. Dang, I need it a little slower. <laughs> <laughs> they have to do this in real time. And that's field, why that I'm such a fan of having this. I think that the replay review is such an important piece. Oh, that's a good shot. Because to the naked eye for Mike Bartling to be able to make this call, it's such a hard call. I don't know if there will be enough to overturn it, but. I think what we can tell obstruction wise, uh, there Nothing. was clearly a lane to the plate for the runner. Yes. So that's, that's out of it. I'm not a big fan of the obstruction call. I, I know you know that. I've never that. met anyone that's a huge fan of the obstruction call. I know. They're always like, man, I love obstruction. I. <laughs> I don't ever want the athlete to have to run into a situation where they might get hurt. Absolutely But not. at times yeah. you are seeing a lot more runners being sent home in situations where they're banking on getting that call. Um, but that's not in play here. It's, it was the tag applied before the hand hit. And again, the original call in the field was out at the plate. So here we go. The decision from Pittsburgh is in. They change this call. Yeah, that is the angle we did not see, Courtney. And the slow-mo, you just see the top of the hand right there. And then, uh. Yeah, that was the same looks. We just zoomed in on those for a better look for you. The one thing that you are not seeing as much of, I will say, with the replay reviews is the coaches and the arguments, right? Like you sometimes will see these head coaches that are fired up and no doubt Coach Baldwin frustrated, but you're not seeing these big heated exchanges because you are going to the replay review. The right call was made. It was sent to Pittsburgh that it is what it is. And now you move on, but it doesn't go without saying that was legit defense there by Georgia to step up and make that play. And it is so close. So Janai Kerr is going to reach on the fielder's choice. She advances to second on the throw, gets the RBI as Belvi scores. Muffley at third, Kerr at second for Kaylee Harding. Harding with the only hit in this game for Florida State. It was in the first inning. Two have reached via the fielder's choice, and the two were hit by a pitch. And look at Florida State's situational hitting last night. Six for 15 with runners on, four for 12, risk. They were so good at passing the bat. 
And let's not forget, last Sunday, when they had to play back-to-back -back games against South Carolina, they had one run in 14 innings. Right. So this was a team that completely changed it around this week with that short turnaround on the Thursday night start. And sometimes that's what it comes down to. One game where you're not able to get things going doesn't define what you're going to be in the postseason. And I say the same thing for Georgia. So much time left in this ball game. This is a team that can put a six spot up in a heartbeat. And Florida State went back to the offense that we know from them, right? Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. a 300 plus hitting team this season. They love those doubles. And when they start passing the bat and putting the speed on the bases, that's when the engine really gets going. And I think they're a team that as soon as they hit it, I mean, it's doubles on the mind right away. They're turning and rounding first. Space for Harding. Bring home Muffley. Kerr wants to come home too, and she will. Out at third. Either way, though, Kaylee Harding sending two runs home. Kaylee Harding has been rolling. This is an off-speed changeup on the outer half, not fooled at all. A ton of speed, hits the gap. You know those two runs are scoring, no doubt. Tries to get to three, but great defense executed by Georgia. Sarah Mosley lays down the tag right in front of the base. And I think you have to think about the hit by pitches, right? And that momentum that it gives Florida State at the bottom of the lineup with 8-9 getting hit and then putting the top of the order in that position. If you take that piece out, I think this is a different dynamic of the top of the third. But those little things hurt you as a pitcher when you're giving up those free passes. Harding gets a double and one RBI. Michaela Edenfield now two down, nobody on. All three runs coming here in the third for Florida State, and we're not surprised by that. The second time through the lineup, they are so good. Armistead makes the play, but just like that, Florida State has a three-run lead. A win tonight sends them to Oklahoma City. Her mind after getting knocked out by Texas in the semifinals last year. 7-8-9 mm -hmm. up for the first time facing Matt Leonard, who has struck out two. Ten-pitch inning in the second. Jaden Goodwin, left fielder, will lead off. What do you think about Mac Leonard so far in this game, getting the start tonight? I think she's done a great job. She's hitting good spots. She's throwing hard down in the zone. And at the end of the day, it comes down to the location piece and being efficient with that. Ooh, that and, didn't feel good. And on the flip side for Georgia, energy has to be created. If it's not going to be by the long ball, what is it going to be? Is it going to be a good defensive inning? But I think for them, they're at their best when they have that, when they have that confidence, when the swagger is there. You're starting to see it a little bit in the dugout, but that to me needs to be turned up a notch for them. One, one to Goodwin after she shakes off being hit by the foul ball. Shook it off nicely. Goodwin looking for two. Maybe that's the spark Georgia needed. So good on the inner half. Not a bad spot by Mac Leonard. This is just legit hitting an absolute rope. Gets by Waycaser, legs out the double. She goes by Shorty, and that is a big leadoff for Georgia. They need to use that momentum, try to get something going. That's their first hit tonight. 
It's the eighth double of the season for Goodwin and brings up Jaden Fields playing in the DP this evening. Saw her at first base yesterday. Fields one for three last night. Again, the situational hitting for Georgia, not what they were hoping for. 0 for 12 with runners on in game one. They left five on base last night. Wow. And we asked Coach Tony Baldwin kind of the plan of attack on the day. What did the team do? He said, we definitely have some of the nervous Nellies that like to hit. They just, with a lot of time on the day, so they were here hitting earlier. He said there's some women on the team that want no part of that, so he makes them go walk, and they just walk around and take some time. Up the middle, Jaden Fields. Good one at third. Runners on the corners. It hopped off the glove of Bethany Keene from first. So now Georgia, two hits on the board, both of them coming back to back here in the third. And Florida State's gonna huddle up in the infield. Solid production from the lower half of the lineup here. Seven, eight, nine, being scrappy. You like that, especially after Florida State just puts three up on you. There's action in the bullpen for Florida State. McKenna Reed. And I think this is a team, Florida State is fully aware of the pop behind the bats of Georgia and three runs is never enough. We'll get back in this ball game with one swing of the bat. Yeah, Ellie Armistead representing the tying run at the plate. Now she only has three home runs on the season. It was 0 for 2 last night. Just two hits over her last 10 games. Leonard checked the runner at third before throwing to Keane to make the play. Jaden Fields now in scoring position. And this is what it comes down to. It's what Tony Baldwin talked about, like being able to produce when we have runners in scoring position. And he said they missed that opportunity yesterday. There was action where that could have happened and they didn't step up. And now you have leadoff hitter with a runner at second and third, an opportunity for good night. And Dallas, good night, top of the order. To Keen, and she applies the tag. Run comes across for Georgia. Chipping away. Stepping up to the plate, number 11, Lindy Ray Davis. And now Lindy Ray Davis with Fields at third. She's hitting 317 with runners on, 273 with runners in scoring position. We saw last time up, Mack Leonard worked her inside, struck her out. You can't say that that pitch wasn't getting called for her on her last attack of Davis, because it was. And that's really the only thing that you ask for for the pitchers, right? They spend that first inning trying to figure out the strike zone. What can I get executed for a pitch on the inner half to lefties and righties? How can I spread that zone? 
and especially that second time through the lineup, you just want to know that you can get that pitch. And you see back-to-back -back pitches that Mac Leonard got for strikes first time through. Two and one now to Lindy Ray Davis. And if I'm Lindy Ray Davis, I'm fully aware that she can bring 70 in on my hands. She's still crowding that plate a little bit at the back of the box, but wouldn't be surprised. Staying alive in there. And that pitch, I mean, she's pretty much got hammered on the in on every single pitch. And now as a pitcher, it potentially opens up something on that outer half if you wanted to. Coach Lonnie Alameda calls pitches for Florida State, but I mean, you're also getting swings on pitches that Lindy Ray Davis cannot do anything with. It's knowing, hey, I have two strikes. That pitch looks good. But this is when everything kind of goes in Mac Leonard's corner. She can spread the zone. Got her going down. And the second time she has struck out Lindy Ray Davis. And Mac Leonard has three strikeouts tonight. Alameda, coach, getting the win last night. What was your message to the team going into game two with Georgia today? Uh, I mean, like, congratulations, one. Like, it's uh, this time of year is so tough to win ball games, and you really got to enjoy it, you know? And then uh, it's a little about making adjustments right now. Knew they would come out with a different game plan. Um, definitely think that we would see a few more change-ups. Um, kind of like, you know, the battle that's going into game two. Um, fortunate to win game one. Um, the percentage is going your favor, but you still got a dogfight to get after it. So um, what an atmosphere. It's been so much fun. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Last week, I thought the crowd was rowdy and fun. Yeah. But this weekend just seems like a completely different group. I mean, Sid Sheryl's in the house. Talk yeah. about how much it pays off to be able to play at home. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it's a huge family here and I know you say it you know yada yada but it really is and it's good to see all the alumni back here and they just love it we work so hard to build this you know from just uh, from fundraising to connection to community um, I mean the fire department it's just so special and so awesome Lonnie thank you so much for your time we thank appreciate you. it thank you yeah, the Tallahassee the Tallahassee fire department they are a mainstay just over the outfield fence that's incredible. <laughs> it is. That's why you fight all season and you play that tough schedule for sure. You want to prepare your team for what the postseason is and how hard that grind is. But it's for little perks like this, like being able to host a regional, host a super regional. Does Florida State come out of that Sunday regional final if they're not at home like that little right. extra dose of knowing hey like we know this field we know this crowd those little things really help a team out I mean the advantage of having the home mullet <laughs> no <laughs> doubt <laughs> that get me going Devin Flaherty foul ball <laughs> Florida State, second time through the lineup, so good. That's where all three of their runs have come in the third inning. The second time they faced Shelby Walters, and they started off big. The first two batters in the third, both hit by pitches to breach. And that's where stuff starts to get tricky, right? When you get into the postseason, it's being able to really be locked in at what your job is. And sometimes with pitching, if stuff gets away from you and something like that happens, teams are going to find a way to execute in moments like that. And Florida State with two hit by pitches, they do just that. Flaherty up the middle, Kuma racing over. <laughs> The Women's College World Series returns to Oklahoma City. The action begins Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern, live on ESPN. For more information on the 2023 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships.
Leonard steps in, trying to help her own cause. In the circle, in the batter's box, she does it all for Florida State. Go back to the last inning, the two hit by a pitches. Three runs come across for Florida State. Shelby Walters, though, with a chance to come back out, recompose herself, and her offense gets a run on the board to cut it to two. And those are the little things you have to think about as a pitcher. And I mean, she's still getting squeezed as well. I think it should be an 0-2 count, but that's what it comes down to. It's like, all right, hey, my team has my back. Yeah, I, a couple hit by pitches, some action happened, but like I need to lock in and I need to find a way to just execute my job. They put so much trust in the pitching coach, Chelsea Wilkinson for Georgia. Super great with all pitchers on staff. And Shelby Walters has clicked with her immediately. Yes. She told us, uh, Chelsea Wilkinson is my pitching soulmate. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your pitching soulmate, Daniel? Oh, man. You just put me on the spot. I know. I, I feel like it could be a coach or a catcher or... I'm probably my uh, old pitching coach from back in the day, back in Canada, people, Rick Sullivan, but like people don't. But he's the one that got me into it, so toot his horn there. Toot toot. Ball and two strikes. Ellie Armistead. Snag. It's back to back. Really good defensive plays. You saw Sydney Kuma make that play up the middle on Flaherty, who has a lot of speed up the line. And then you see Armistead get to that ball. And those are the little things as a defense that help pick your pitcher up. And more importantly, where you. Get that momentum going. Hallie Waitcaser, they say she did not go. Side does get the call. How are you navigating the strike zone if you're a pitcher? <laughs> you're, tr you're trying your best to hit good corners. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair ball! Waycaser down the line! Base hit! See this drop ball on the inner half. Waycaser turns on it, able to get enough heat on this to get it past Sarah Mosley. Rocket down the line. Brings us to the eight hitter, Bethany Keene, who led off in the third with that hit by a pitch. Straight heat. The one thing that I, I can say about Shelby Walters, regardless of anything that's going on, poised, in control, can't tell emotions where she's at. Veteran. And I think that's such an important piece to the game. With the pressure of what a game like this is to Georgia in the sense where your back's up against the wall, you lose, you're done, you're looking to the circle. She's touching the ball every single play, and there's so much that goes into that as a defense. When you're looking at your pitcher, they ride the emotional train that you are on and there's been some things that have happened but she's just kind of stayed calm and composed ball and two strikes to keen good spot as Alabama's head coach Patrick Murphy told us, there's literally a circle drawn around the pitcher out there, so it might be an important position. Teammates looking to you, how do you handle it? How do you respond? And I love a good emotional pitcher, don't get me wrong, I think there's something so fun about that. 
There's a little motion. Yeah. <laughs> Her first strikeout of the night. She sits down keen. And Florida State leaving a runner on. We'll talk to Georgia. Your players tonight from last night to now. Well, I felt like we came out a little timid that first time through the order, but uh, Shorty got us going and uh, gave us a little spark. And, we, you know, the important thing there was we got an answer back. We gave up a couple runs. We came right back, answer back. Shelby goes out and gets us a zero on the board, and now we just got to keep, keep fighting. Well, and that's what I'm going to ask, kind of conversations that she's having with Chelsea Wilkinson in between innings. Obviously, one little bit of hit by pitches, but she's been continuing to get better. Yeah, you know, it was just one little... Uh, you know, stretch there where she didn't execute some pitches. And, uh, you know, Florida State's got a really good team, and if you don't execute the pitches, they're going to make you pay for it. And uh, that's what happened there. But, you know, it's two good teams going at it on a great atmosphere again here tonight. And, you know, we're going to play all 7-8 uh, and see what happens. Absolutely. Thanks, Coach Baldwin. We appreciate it. Yep, thank you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the postseason, love it. The nice. best teams mm -hmm. playing their best softball. And Max twitter has been pretty solid, too. And now she gets a chance to go through a murderer's row here again for the second time. So yeah. I'm going to love to see adjustments being made by these Georgia hitters. I think that's so important that second time through against Leonard with that hard drop ball down. Jada Kearney, first pitch to Devin Flaherty. Look at this part of the order, career numbers for these hitters that are coming up right now for Georgia. If this doesn't keep you up at night as a pitcher, this part of the order, Kearney, Mosley, Kuma, and Chambly. Career hitting 343 together, 160 home runs over 550 wow. RBI. Yeah, they are a tough bunch. They're scrappy, and I mean, I know the history. I've played against Georgia in the World Series. How'd there. that go? <laughs> I mean, we ended up beating them the game that we needed to, but they got me the year before. Like, this is one of the toughest offenses that I ever faced in my career. They were someone I did not like playing. Ground goes short. Buckley takes care of it. I know you mentioned that few times over the last few years. That was one of the first things I said to you when we got this. I yeah. was like, man, this is a team that like I do not want to mess around with in the postseason simply because I know the work that goes into their swings throughout the week prepping for pitchers. And a regional is so much different than a super regional. A regional, you're prepping for three separate teams, but a super, you have that time during the week to try to prepare for the pitchers that you're going to face. Here's Sidney Kuma. Um, Brett is our graphics czar, if you will, and he uh, dug up some numbers on you against Georgia in the 2009 Women's College World Series, couple of games. But if we could clarify, yeah. <laughs> numbers aren't great, but we did win the national championship yeah, that year. So we, but they had my number, clearly. Has not forgotten it. Harding. <laughs> Man, her arm is on fire. Florida State defense so efficient. So when they're going to challenge this play, hold on, don't go to the bathroom yet, come back. Got a challenge on this play. Did it get there in time? The call on the field was that the runner was out. So again, each team getting two challenges. They'll make the decision in Pittsburgh. Oh, I think she's. Yeah. I think she's out. Yep. Worth the look, though. Harding has such a cannon from third. I mean, I'd love to see her velo throwing overhand with a baseball. Yeah. Just on how she throws it. Like I don't. And I played with some teammates that throw it hard. Jen Salling was shortstop for us at Washington. And I thought that she had one of the best arms I've ever seen. And then watching Harding throw. The call is upheld. Okay, now you get a break. <laughs> Great play by Kaylee Harding at third, and we move on. Seminoles getting all three runs in the top of the third inning. They lead it three to one.
And the number nine hitter, Josie Muffley, was hit by a pitch, came around and scored a run in the third inning. The official Josie Muffley cheering section is on top of a fire truck in right field tonight. If you follow Florida State, then you know that Josie Muffley volunteers with the Tallahassee Fire Department, does ride along. She wants to be a firefighter. So if they're not getting a call, they're here in the outfield. They've been at every game that we've called, even if it's just for a little bit. So cool, passionate about it. Started doing ride-alongs when she was in high school. Has brought that over to Florida State. Hi, Hopper to Armistead. No problem. Back to Matt, back to Matt in the studio. Now batting number six, Kaylee Mudd. You know, Matt's a hard name to say sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he called you out for it, I though. Know. Oh, of course he did. Top of the order and Kaylee Mudge. Hits Mudge so hard, the Evo shield on her arm falls off. That's the third hit by a pitch for Shelby Walters tonight. What's happening there on these hit by pitches for Shelby? I mean, I wish I could say that I knew. Uncharacteristic for her right. to hit three in, in it was one eight. game and she's only Coming had in, yeah. eight, yeah, leading up to this game. And I mean, this is a Georgia pitching staff that has worked really well together. Madison Kerpix and Shelby Walters have been the dynamic duo all year long. And I think that's the one thing that just has not been as sharp, right? That you're looking at. They're just not as sharp as they normally have been. See a little Cat Sandercock warming up, knowing that there's nine outs left against the scrappy Georgia offense. But that's really what it comes down to, Courtney. Like you have to be able to execute in the circle in big time moments and three hit by pitches is three free passes and great teams like coach Tony Baldwin said are going to find ways to make you pay and that's what Florida State has done. Yeah, both of the previous two hit by the pitches came around and scored yep. one. Two balls, no strikes to Janai Kerr. going 17th stolen base for Kaylee Mudge it's 125 on the season for Florida State towards Sydney Kuma at second. Mudge to third. And besides Kaylee Mudge, to me, Kaylee Harding is one of the hottest hitters in this Super Regional. And in a situation like this with a runner on third base, I am definitely being a little bit more conscious of how she's been hitting. Obviously, there is an open base. Pitching coach Chelsea Wilkinson going to go out and talk shop with the battery. I think this is so 
important to do just with how she has been swinging it. And I mean, you have to respect who's behind her and Michaela Edenfield. But I think it, it really does come down to that comfort level in your gut for someone like Shelby Walters and going out and having that conversation. How do you feel attacking her? And she says, hey, I want to put her on. You put her on. But it's being able to execute pitches in big moments. And that's something Coach Tony Baldwin said yesterday facing Katherine Sandercock that she does better than most. Great pitchers execute legit pitches when they need to in moments of pressure. And he said she does that and she did it and executed it against us. Hence why we only had one run. We'll see how they attack Harding in the moment. Harding had a RBI double in the third. This is what she did in the third inning and sped around all the way to third, was thrown out, but the run scored first. Two runs actually off this play. She only got the one RBI. That's kind of back-to-back -back pitches spread way out of the zone. Might be a intentional, unintentional walk here. Harding leading the NCAA tournament field in doubles with four. Part of the Florida State team that leads the nation in doubles. That is a strike call. <laughs> strike two. Hey, I don't know if she was trying to walk her, but now that she's got her at a 2-2 count, I'm doing the exact same pitch I just got her to swing and miss on, that 70-mile-an-hour curve that I'm trying to spread way out. See if you can get her to chase. Full count now. I'm sure Walters is aware. Last at bat, the double was off the changeup. Situations like this, that's in the forefront of your mind as a pitcher, all right? She snagged me on the change. Staying alive, fouled it off. This will be the seventh pitch coming to Kaylee Harding. Strikeout for Shelby Walters. Florida State leaves a runner on third. They're one for five with runners in scoring position tonight, but up to. In two Olympic games with Team Canada, she was our pitching coach, and I completely understand why this program is what it is. She is one of, one of the GOATs, the work, the tireless work that goes into what she does. And I know across the board coaches do it, but since I felt like I got to see it as a player, had a little inside scoop to how great of a pitching coach she is. I love that she's kind of created that pitch by committee, maybe more, and brought that into the game a little bit. And that's something that she's talked about for a very long time, even before she got to Florida State. And really getting pitchers to buy into that. Okay, I'm gonna, she said, all the pitchers have an ego, right? Like, so I gotta get them to buy into that ego for, I need 23 pitches of ego in this game. 23 or 70 pitches, right. but how can you get that selflessness out of the athlete? That's really what it comes down to and boils down to in the moment. Mack Leonard ahead, 0-2 on Chambly. Just bounces foul. And our game has changed in the sense where hitting is just better than pitching. And it, it didn't used to be like that back in the day. You could throw one arm over 300 innings in a season and throw them in three games of a super and it, you wouldn't think twice, but now that hitting is just the data and the information and the prep, you have to be a little bit smarter with your pitchers and your matchups and all of it. 
strike out for Matt Leonard, number four. It's the backwards K, and it just goes to show how important it is to establish the in. The back-to-back -back pitches on the inner half to Chambly. Then she spots a gem on the outer half and absolutely freezes her. And I mean, you look at Mac Leonard, she's only thrown a four innings pitched as the most in a game. That was versus UCLA and Tampa and Marist in game one of the regional. This is the most that she's gone all year. Coming off a five pitch inning in the fourth, now facing Jaden Goodwin for the first, for the second time. Goodwin had a double in the third. And look, going back to the pitching staff, the question right now is who can beat Oklahoma twice? Is it not? They're the number one yes. team in the nation. They've won the last two national championships. Yes. You think it's going to take a pitching staff to do that? 100% is. There's not one. I mean, Valerie Cagle went up for the challenge today, and I thought she was, she did great, but yeah. they ended up still winning 9-2. to two. Like, they're a very tough team, and it's going to take in my opinion something kind of crazy to happen for them not to win again whether or not they love that pressure but in my mind it's going to take something whether one team beats them in a Thursday opening round of OKC and then someone different on Saturday but I'm not sure that there is a team out there right now that that can do it But that's the beauty of sport, and that's why you play, and you get to the pressure of what Oklahoma City is all about and shake things up, and anything can happen. First walk by Mac Leonard tonight. You see how her pitches shake up. 33 strikes, 50 total pitches, and Lonnie Alameda out to the circle. Jaden Fields coming up here in the eighth spot. And I think they're going to make a change in the circle. What a start in this game for Mac Leonard. Four strikeouts on the evening. And the pitching staff comes into play here for the Seminoles. We'll step aside, we'll introduce you to the new pitcher when we come back to tally. Tying run at the plate. Jaden Fields, the number eight hitter. Goodwin reached on the walk. And a first pitch strike swinging drawn from McKenna Reed. Quickly jump ahead, 0 2. I mean, climb the ladder, McKenna Reed. Perfect spin, perfect location at an 0 2 count. Mac Leonard here for it. I mean, just back to back pitchers throwing 70 miles an hour, both from different sides. One a lefty, one a righty, one up in the zone. Mac Leonard primarily down as a hitter. That is tough, Courtney, to step in the back box knowing, all right, Mac Leonard was throwing me drop balls down to my feet. And now I have to worry about this lefty throwing 70 that can spread the zone and go up. It's a hard adjustment as a hitter. And I like this change. And again, they did not see McKenna Reed yesterday. Obviously seen her on film, but it's different in person. And now Lauren Burnett, pinch hitter in the nine spot.
Again, she's ahead to both batters that she's faced. When she does come from that left side, has that elite level curveball, can spin it up, throws it hard. I mean, she's gotten a really good amount of innings on this season. And you look at Kat Sandercock, who has been the ace of this team over the last couple years, but she turned herself into a little bit of a different role when you look at it. Getting McKenna Reed more innings. Welcome to Supers, freshman. <laughs> To back straight. Matt, thank you. Danielle, uh, how were you watching your Huskies come back on Sunday in the regional final? Oh, I was actually watching with my uh, one of my old teammates, Kaylee Rafter, who's a volunteer assistant at Florida State and caught for me at two Olympic games and I'm sitting there and I'm like, yo, Raph, there's no way they're putting up six runs in the bottom of the seventh inning. She goes, I don't know, I have a good feeling. I was like, I will buy you a Starbucks if they do. Did and you did you pay up? I haven't yet. That actually reminded me I need to need to get after that. Edfield. It hit the umpire. Ricochet towards center. That thing came off the bat like a laser. <laughs> Yeah, she takes this pitch on the outer half, right to back up the middle, just nicks the umpire. Glad that it didn't go past Goodnight in center field enough. Keeps Elton Edenfield at first. And they will pinch run for her. Ross coming in to run at first. Now Devin Flaherty. This will be the third time up against Shelby Walter. She has yet to reach. But Edenfield setting the tone, getting on to lead off. And the importance of Florida State putting any more insurance runs on the board. Critical facing a Georgia team that can get hot at any time. I couldn't agree more with you. The importance right here for the Georgia defense to be able to step up. There goes Ross, safe. 19th stolen base for Ross. It's a ball and a strike to Flaherty. Devin Flaherty has carried a big bat in this tournament. She's the only player for Florida State to have a hit in every game of the NCAA tournament. She's on a season-high seven-game hit streak. Hitting 500 during that time. calls her the unsung hero. She is the second baseman, and Lonnie considers that the quarterback on the field. Doing that well, holding down that spot, and managing her at bat so much better. And a different type of leader. I think when you're able to sometimes have those hard conversations and hear some things that maybe push you out of your comfort zone, which she did at the end of the season last year, and. You know, in Coach Alameda's office, you walk in and there's some candy sitting there. And I'm like, oh, is this just to kind of soften the blow? You know, and you have to have those <laughs> hard conversations. Come here, you want to grab a Reese's? Okay, all right, let's really get down the nitty gritty. <laughs> but you really kind of help Devin Flaherty in that leadership piece. It's towards short. Armistead grabs it. 
We'll have game five of the Western Conference final for you. It's tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. On She's not going to say anything no, to you. No, she would never, but I just... The York Peppermint Patty's been calling my name. <laughs> not that I've thought about it. Just got, Mac Leonard. just got a little update on, on the Montana Fouts. Jeff Muir, one of our stat guys, he's doing the SEC baseball tournament, but I told him I wanted the skinny on Montana Fouts. Three innings pitch, five hits, two earned runs, three Ks, one home run allowed. And I don't know if it's just that time off in between SEC tournament where she did get hurt. The postseason is just a, it's different. Yeah. And I mean, I'm Montana Fouts' biggest fan. I look at what that young lady has not only done for Alabama, but for the little girls that watch and aspire to play this game. I mean, people want to be Montana Fouts. So see if she can try to bounce back, but definitely uncharacteristic numbers for Fouts in Alabama. And you just took Matt Schick's job. No. That was our studio update, Brunt. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jeff Muir. Two balls and a strike here to Mac Leonard, who started this game in the circle, was absolutely fantastic. Trying to help out Ross, who's at second. Back to Walters, good snag. That does move Ross to third. This saves a run all day. You look at where Kuma is at second base. That ball is going to get by. Shelby Walters with the snag saves Ross from scoring. Two down, runner on third for Hallie Waycaster, who singled her last time up. That was in the fourth inning. Likes the first pitch, but misses. And that's that like electric movement of Shelby Walters' curveball. And you saw it to Kaylee Harding, and you just saw it to Haley Waycaser right there. And that's a pitch that I think she struggled with with the hit by pitches, trying to throw that, not having as much command, but it is jumping as of late. Leary Davis hops up quickly. Ross holding at third. Two balls and a strike to Hallie Waycaser. This is 2-1. She takes this curveball, elevated up, but it is out. She does a really good job of going and getting this pitch that would not have been called a strike if she left it, but finds the green and adds on another key insurance run for Florida State. Knowing Georgia can swing it, they have six outs left. Adding another run up on the board is big for Florida State. Hallie Waycaser came into this game with two hits in the tournament. She has had two hits tonight. Bethany Keene fouls off the first pitch. And again, this inning started with Michaela Edenfield leading off with a single. Yep. And it just looks like such a different team offensively than what we saw in the regional. I mean, they were hot day one going up against Maris. Keen, way high up in the air. Good win. Got it. One more run on the board for Florida State. A win for the Seminoles tonight. See it. 
Will Florida State join them there tonight? A win tonight in this game for Florida State. They advance a win for Georgia, and we are playing tomorrow, game three here. So this will be the top of the order. Dallas Goodnight. McKenna Reed came in in the fifth inning, faced two batters. Danielle, six pitches, six strikes, two strikeouts swinging. Pretty efficient, I would say. Not bad entrance to your very first <laughs> Super Regional as a pitcher. Mike Bartling behind the dish said she kind of leaned into it with that Evo shield and I think he's right to make that call. He keeps her in the box. This is going to be a tough task here for McKenna Reed going at the top of the order here. This is a third time through for them. And this is a team that when we asked coach Lonnie Alameda the plan of attack they said they hit Velo well. This is a team that knows how to hit 68, 70 miles an hour, no problem. The key to success against this offense is if you can't change speeds, you're going to be in trouble. Good night. That hit her in the box. She'll come back. Look, Georgia has two hits right now. Their season low is three hits in three games this year. I've done that three times. And it's just so interesting when you get to sit down and talk with these coaches, like talking shop with Lonnie Alameda about how she does the, the pitches and the homework and how they think things and how everything is situational. There's so much thought that goes into all of it. Hopper to Harding. It's a low throw and it gets away from King. Dallas Goodnight to second. Opportunity to grab momentum for Georgia with the error at third. And Harding had the time. You know Goodnight has some speed. But that throw down gets by Keen, not able to scoop it. That's a ball. Got to keep it in front. Yes, it has to be a better throw. But Keen at first, try to keep that in front of you. Little momentum here. Time run comes to the plate. Lindy Ray Davis. Just the third error of the tournament for Florida State. Not the time run, excuse me. They did score last yep. inning. <laughs> Math is hard. It was for me. Lindy Ray Davis, this will be the first time that she's seeing McKenna Reed, but struck out twice against Mac Leonard. Two of Leonard's four strikeouts on the night. When you saw Mac Leonard really go down and in on Davis. And those lefty lefty matchups tend to at times favor the pitcher that curveball away lefty hitters do not get to see as much repetitions from the left side with that curveball that is flowing away from them. Big cut for strike two. And if you're Georgia right now, it's got to be capitalizing on the little defensive miscue. You saw Florida State do that with the couple hit by pitches and they got things going. And now for Georgia, it's going to be the exact same mentality. Florida State gives you something, got to try to take a mile. Lindsay Ray Davis, just a sophomore, but in her second season is the primary catcher for Georgia. A 
upstairs, ball two. And I'm wondering if now is the time to try to freeze Lindy Ray Davis on the outer half. Mac Leonard, a lot of heavy down and in. You've seen McKenna Reed extend and climb the ladder with the up and in on Lindy Ray, but potentially can get her caught looking if you can spread the zone, try to throw that curveball on the outer half. We'll see. Lindy Ray Davis stepping up, runner coming home. Good night scores as Georgia taking advantage of the error. And a really good job by Lindy Ray Davis to be on time with this pitch. It does miss over the heart of the plate, but it comes down to timing. Not fooled by the velocity. Clutch ribby for Davis. She's fired up. And we're going to have a pitching change. Guess who? Kat Sandercock to the circle for Florida State. We step aside for now. Man, man, I just said that to you. This is what it's all about. And bringing her in here. And someone that loved it last week. Like, you think about that 30-minute turnaround in between game one that they lost to South Carolina on the brink of elimination, thinking, man, are we going to have a repeat of last year losing to Mississippi State? And she's able to go out and do what she did. She'll start with the hardest part of Georgia's order, Jada Kearney. balls and a strike now. Catherine Sandercock, a new school record, her 180th appearance in the circle over her five seasons as a Florida State Seminole. you're going to be able to get for a strike getting pinched a little bit on the outer half against Kearney mostly representing the go-ahead run at the plate
It's going to stay in the infield. Devin Flaherty. Runners hold. Big out by Kat Sandercock. And now you come to Sydney Kuma, who hit a home run off of Katherine Sandercock last night. Drop ball away. A little bit elevated. Oppo tacoed it. It was such a game of inches. You thought, is it going to go foul? It stayed in the ballpark. And Georgia went wild yesterday. Big cut for strike one, but here was last night and Kuma. Just gets over. Her 12th home run of the season and her 200th career hit last night for Sydney Kuma. comes down to it, Courtney, it comes down to executing pitches in pressure-filled moments. The mentality of like pressure is a privilege. This is one of the most pressure-filled moments that she's in right now. Like you're facing one of the best offenses in the country. And to be able to just stick to the routine is something she said on Sports Center at 6.30. Like, I stick to my routine. I take my breath. I do the same thing every single pitch. Being able to rely on those little things give you the confidence in moments like this to be able to step up. That's what we saw from her Sunday. I mean, there was a 40-minute rain delay in the yep. middle of her perfect game. Yep. And she kept composed. And there's such a trust in the preparation, right? Like knowing, hey, I've done everything I can. We've heard her say it multiple times. I'm going to hang my hat on knowing I've done everything I possibly can do the, to be the best pitcher and the best teammate to this Florida State team. Time called by Kuma. Sydney Kuma, five hits in the tournament, 455 average, including a home run. See Cat really nibbling that inner half. Takuma knowing yesterday, obviously she goes yard on a pitch on the outer half. It doesn't mean you can't go away. I just think we are definitely smart. And if you go away at something lower, maybe shins down at a one-two count, try to get her chasing something she cannot do anything with. Good take. Kuma hanging in there, gets that back to two and two, even up. And in a perfect world, she could climb the ladder here and go up and in because she hasn't thrown one rise ball yet. We saw her do it through the second time through the lineup yesterday and got some swings and misses, but she's gone down, down, down. Maybe she could spread something up a little. Such a big A-B by Kuma. Seventh pitch of the at-bat. She's taking pitches that are so hard to take. Career 348 hitter, Sydney Kuma. She's got a full count, two on.
Sander Cox wins the duel. I mean, I don't know about you, but the hairs on my arms are standing up. This is just elite level stuff, you guys. This is such a quality AB, so much good. Kuma absolutely battling. But Sander Cox gets her with that drop on the inner half. So good. Two outs since she's come in. Whew. First pitch strike to Sydney Chambly. Just like that, it's 0-2. change up was money and she was spotting pitch as well and then stuff kind of fell off a little bit after that but I like this change here if you're Georgia you don't want anything else to happen so to bring someone else in little change of speeds change in velocity it'll be eight one and or nine one and two coming up starting with Josie Muffley towards left. Good win, yes. <laughs> Top of the order for the fourth time. Kaylee Mudge has reached once tonight. It was a hit by a pitch in the fifth inning. Coming off a three for three night yesterday with three RBI. job by Kaylee Mudge down on the count 0-1 takes this pitch on the inner half and just drives it straight to the gap laces it to the warning track double all day it's the 119th double on the season for Florida State they've already set the single season record just adding to it their second one tonight Janai Kerr first pitch Good win, hustling in. Now batting number eight, Kaylee Harding. Now with Mudge in scoring position, it is down to Kaylee Harding to extend this inning. Florida State two for nine with runners in scoring position tonight.
Goodwin readjusting. And Georgia's season comes down to the next three outs. To the bottom of the seventh we go here in the Super Regionals. She's done tonight. Pretty incredible. She made it through the pressure in the sixth inning. Now the pressure is on these Georgia hitters. Three outs to work with. Three outs between playing tomorrow and ending the season. Lynn Shorty's who you want to start off with if you are Georgia. Goodwin, so good, has had a great night. Double, a walk. It's seven, eight, nine up for Georgia. That puts Sandercock ahead, 0-2. And those are the pitches that you use and tuck away. And remember, if you're getting swings at misses on drop balls that are at least two, three balls on the outer half, you know in the forefront of your brain, hey, I can toy with the hitter. She's got that little bit of a defensive swing. I have to hit a good crisp spot. batter that Kat Sandercock has faced with an 0-2 count. pitches to good night away 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 and now if cat can locate something down and in really down potentially you can get that big swing and miss because as a hitter you know all right last three pitches she's thrown me i've had to go get it potentially catch her on her heels Good hold, such a good hold. That's a tough pitch. I do it again. This is what you want out of your leadoff, starting out in the bottom of the seventh inning, having a good at bat, and going on the seventh pitch for Goodwin. She's reached in her two previous, previous appearances, and now, again, the count, a ball and two strikes. Inside to two. about ninth pitch coming to Jaden Goodwin I don't know if she's gonna do it but her seeing a lot of pitches you sneak a little change in there and you locate it where you need to it could be a dangerous pitch for her in a good way
Cleveland Stairs, ball three. This will be the 10th pitch coming to Goodwin. It may not be the, the seven pitch or seven minute AB that we saw from Kerr. We're not but done yet. She's working it. that I've seen in a moment where you need a hitter to step up, step up and yeah, she is just a freshman, but she has been phenomenal for Georgia all year long. That's huge because now Jaden Fields representing the time run at the plate. Back to Sandercock. And it's a good save by Muffley. She had to reach across the bag. Maybe tweak something. She has that big old knee brace on. Just kind of pulls her, puts that pressure on her right knee. She has to go get it. I love the heads up play by Sandercock to want to get that lead out. And hats off to Josie Muffley for being able to stop that, not letting it get by. But Coach Lonnie Alameda told us before this started, she said at times Muffley is battling some injuries, but she will never not be out on that field. Here's Ellie Armistead. Muffley just out of reach. Two on. Bring the winning run to the plate for Georgia. Dallas, good night. Two home runs on the year. Fourth time up for good night. She had an RBI in the third, reached on an error in the sixth. Throw in time, runners move over to in scoring position. And they'll take a look at this play. You see Keen kind of shaking her head, saying no, no, kept my foot on the base. You kind of see this because you know how important this is for Georgia, but a potential ice, the kicker, ice the pitcher mentality here, making her wait. There's pressure, there's lots going on. I like this for Georgia. It's worth a look too. It, a, a hundred percent. But it also works in their favor where, looks like her foot's on there. Yeah. That's the money right shot right yep. there. Yep. So again, the decision being made in Pittsburgh. Original call out at first base from the looks we've seen. That call should be upheld and it looks like they have a decision here. Upheld. 
So now it comes down to Lindy Ray Davis. <laughs> Courtney Lyle. Buckle up, buddy. <laughs> Georgia two for nine with runners in scoring position tonight. Lindy Ray Davis had an RBI single in the sixth after striking out twice, but this will be the first time that she faces Katherine Sandercock tonight. Davis representing the winning run at the plate. This is kind of where you go back. You think about Mac Leonard and her success against Lindy Ray Davis with that 70 mile an hour drop ball down and in, getting those big chases. See if they continue to keep attacking her on that inner half, down and in. down to its final strike. you love this moment for both the hitter and the pitcher like this pressure cooker is what it's all about why you put in the work why the extra work goes in the dark days of why you do what you do help in big moments like this Davis coming up with a nice at bat here. I'm going down and in. I'm going on my bread and butter pitch. That is Kat Sandercock's money pitch. I think you bring it in enough where she's not able to drop barrel on it and you can hit a good spot. towards left, Mudge going back, and Florida State going back to a place they love! Oklahoma City for the 12th time! 